Welcome to the Tuesday, February 2nd, Madison City Council. Let's uh, stand, remove our hats, and uh, recite the Lord's Prayers, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. First up is approval of the minutes from the January 19th meeting. Are there any amendments or modifications? If not, we'll entertain a proposal, a motion, to approve the minutes. I move that we accept the minutes as written. I'll second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. As you know, February is uh, Black History Month, and I'd like to start the meeting out with a, with a proclamation. Whereas Black History Month was adopted in 1976 to honor the significant contributions by black Americans and that they have made the contributions they've made to our nation and to affirm the importance of black history in America. And whereas black history is a time for citizens of our city, our state, and our country to reflect on the rich history and teachings of black Americans and honor their progress and achievements made throughout the world. Whereas the 2021 national theme for the observance is the black family representation, identity, and diversity. And whereas the black community has contributed much to the education, economic development, and culture of Madison for hundreds of years. And whereas Madison was a hub to the Underground Railroad movement, and the city recognizes citizens such as John Carter, Patsy and Chapman Harris, Elijah and William Anderson, John Carr, Willis Riker, George Z. E. Baptiste, and numerous others who were prominent in the Underground Railroad movement. And whereas Madison was home to Broadway School, the first commissioned colored school in Indiana, and our county is home to Eleutherian College, the first college in Indiana that allowed people of color to attend. And whereas many other churches and organizations in the black American community, such as Broadway Baptist Church, St. Stephen AME Church, Eureka Lodge, have had positive impact on our community. And whereas the Georgetown settlement on the east end of Madison was a prominent example of a self-supporting free black community in the 1800s. And whereas in June of 2020, the city of Madison reaffirmed its commitment to promote diversity and inclusion in the community. And whereas the city of Madison is deeply committed to equity and inclusion and is proud to honor the history and contributions of black Americans in our community throughout the state and nation. Now, therefore, I, Bob G. Courtney, Mayor of the City of Madison, Indiana, do hereby proclaim the month of February 2021 to be Black History Month in Madison, and I encourage all Madison residents to join me in celebrating and reflecting on the creativity, cultures, traditions, and importance of black Americans in our history. <coughs> Witness whereof I have here unto set my hand and cause the seal of the City of Madison to be affixed the second day of February 2021. Uh, later on in tonight's presentation, we'll also be talking about um, an initiative that we want to embark on throughout our parks department that I think is part and parcel to recognizing the contributions uh, and the significance of Black History Month. Now, I'm turning it over to resolutions or bills. Joe Jenner. Thank you, Mayor. The first resolution that we have tonight is resolution number 2021 3, a resolution of the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana, transferring certain funds. Whereas the city of Madison received three hundred and eighty-five thousand three hundred and ninety-nine dollars in twenty twenty from the CARES Act funds as reimbursement for expenses related to technology upgrades, related to public meetings, public meeting access, 
expansive broadband access, and various other expenses. And, whereas the city has purchased equipment for the purpose of improving public meeting access, upgrading software, and allowing greater ease of use for staff and the public, computers for better flexibility of staff to work outside of the office, and currently assessing broadband needs in low to moderate income neighborhoods throughout the city. It is now there necessary to transfer certain funds from coronavirus relief fund into the rainy day materials and supplies fund in order to pay for technology upgrades. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana, that the fund funds are transferred. And that would be $50,000 from coronavirus relief fund to the rainy day materials and supplies fund. Good evening, Council. So pretty much laid it out in the resolution there, but I just wanted to remind you that we um, submitted eligible expenses to get that $385,000 reimbursement that was public safety payroll. So fire and police payroll. If we are not going to reimburse ourselves in those payroll line items, we can spend that money on these purposes, but I need to ask your permission to transfer the money out of that fund and into a fund that I can then spend it out of. So that's my purpose for being here this evening. Do need a motion and a second. That was sponsored by Councilwoman Ramsey. I move to approve resolution number 2021-3 as presented. I'll second. Is there any discussion among the council? It appears pretty straightforward and clear. Is there any public questions or comments? Seeing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Chatham? Yes. Dan Dottillo? Yes. Bartlett? Yes. Lucy Dottillo? Yes. Rampy? Yes. Preach? Yes. Tevinall? Yes. Thank you, Council. The second resolution is resolution number 2021-4, authorizing application, submission, and local match commitment. This is a resolution of the City of Madison, of the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana, authorizing the submittal of the COVID-19 response application to the Indiana Department or Indiana Office of Community and Rural Affairs and addressing related matters. Whereas the Madison City Council of the City of Madison, Indiana recognizes the need to stimulate growth and maintain a sound economy within its corporate limits. And whereas the Housing and Community Development Act of 1974 as amended authorizes the Indiana Office of Community and Rural Affairs to provide grants to local units of government to meet the housing and community development needs of low and moderate income persons. And whereas the Madison City Council of the City of Madison, Indiana has conducted or will conduct public hearings prior to the submission of an application to the Indiana Office of Community and Rural Affairs, said public hearings to assess the housing, public facilities, and economic needs of its low and moderate income residents. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Madison City Council of the City of Madison, Indiana, that the mayor of the City of Madison is authorized to prepare and submit an application for grant funding to address COVID-19 response program for the, for the business assistance program and to execute and administer a resultant grant, including requisite general administration and project management contracts and agreements pursuant to the regulations of the Indiana Office of Community and Rural Affairs and the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development. Two, the City of Madison, Indiana hereby commits the requisite local funds in the amount of $25,000 in the form of a city revolving loan fund as matching funds for said program. Such commitment to be contingent upon the receipt of COVID-19 response funding from the Indiana Department or Office of Community and Rural Affairs. Good evening, Council. Um, what you have in front of you is is our our, uh, our local match request and uh, requirement from Okra. Um, just by way of explanation, we had an extremely successful round. We just finished up a small business rescue fund. Um, I think you've seen in my report, um, we were able to assist 32 small businesses throughout Madison. Um, 
and, I, and I'm pleased to report that it almost split in half between the hilltop and downtown. So, but a very diverse, you know, geographic mix that we sometimes get criticized for. So it was good to see both hilltop and downtown benefited. Out of those 32 businesses, 231 employees, predominantly 96.5% were low to moderate income, which is what this program is set out by Oak Ridge to achieve. So we, we really hit the mark with that. So very happy with that. Um, as soon as they announced they were going to come out with another uh, round of funding, the mayor and I immediately wanted to jump on that. So what you have before you tonight is the first step in, in the process. Our proposal was due last Friday. Applications are due the second week of March. And we will have an announcement hopefully early to mid-April on whether we were successful or not. Um, going to be very competitive this round from what we're hearing throughout the state, Com competition from all over, but um, I like our chances based on our track record of, of administering this money. So um, be glad to answer any questions. That's that's it in a, in a nutshell. Do you need a motion and a second? I move we approve resolution 2021-4 as submitted. I'll second that. Is there any discussion among the council or questions for Mr. Worth? Seeing none, is there anything from the public with regard to this topic? Seeing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Creech? Yes. Lucy Dottillo? Yes. Kevinall? Yes. Chatham? Yes. Rampy? Yes. Dan Dottillo? Yes. Bartlett? Yes. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Council. <clears throat> the next is an ordinance on first reading, and it is ordinance number 2021-2, an ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana, amending the city's transfer rate schedule. Whereas the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana enacted ordinance number 2013-2, or chapter 50 in the City of Madison Book of Ordinances, on April 2nd, 2013, regarding garbage collections. <clears throat> Whereas chapter 50.27 of said ordinance provides transfer station charges for individual residents in industrial and commercial refuse haulers. Whereas the Common Council of the City of Madison believes it to be in its best interest of the City of Madison to amend section 50.27C to a rate of $62 per ton. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana, that section 50.27C of the City of Madison Book of Ordinances be amended from $52 to $62 per ton. This ordinance shall become immediately effective upon its adoption by the Common Council, signature of the Mayor, enrollment in the Book of Ordinances, and publication of notice as required by law. I think uh, Deputy Mayor McGee is going to give an introduction to this proposed ordinance so I think the mayor sent out a copy of that ordinance to you it's pretty um, straightforward again when you look at section 50.27 where it lists what we charge for loose trash taken to the transfer station it's $62 um, for up to 2,000 pounds but right below it uh, the compacted trash is $52 for the same ton of trash so um, we're just trying to even that up and make sure that it's consistent. Uh, there's no difference between compacted trash and loose trash when it comes to tonnage, so I'm not sure why we had two different rates. Um, ongoing, we are still in the middle of a trash rate study where all of this will be taken into consideration, but uh, that has taken a, a little bit of a back seat in the last year with uh, everything we've had going on with <laughs> COVID and, and lots of other things. So. That's getting closer to wrapping up, but still ongoing. We'll have the second reading of that. At the I, next I'd meeting. like to make a motion to suspend the rules and go to second reading. Um, I understand the reason behind that because it doesn't seem to be very bad, but I think given the fact that it is a rate increase, that it would probably be best practice to just allow for any public comment at the next one. Okay. And then you could I'll go withdraw. on from there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
<clears throat> oh, next is reports. So. Council, are there any reports, recommendations, or other business from the standing uh, select committees of City Council? Hearing none, we'll go to reports of city officials. So I'll call back up here. Thank you. I got my workout in today anyway. I just have a couple of things to update council on. Uh, wanted to let you know that we just received notice today that we did receive the additional 10% in CARES funding reimbursement. So that's an additional $38,540 that we should be receiving next week. Um, that is uh, for purposes a little bit different. It's for um, public information about um, safety procedures, it's about uh, reimbursing expenses for uh, inspections and things like that. So a little bit uh, tighter rules on that one in terms of how we spend it, but it's nice to have the additional funds in the bank. And I uh, wanted to update you also on the 8th Street sidewalk project. I don't know if any of you have driven by that recently, but the sidewalk is done. The only piece remaining is the fence um, guardrail some kind of rail that we were going to put up for safety on the back side where that where it's quite a bit taller than the the ground and we have partnered with um, the school system cubs manufacturing system the students are actually going to design and engineer that for us and then they will build it and the arts department through the direction of eric fagan will design the art that will go on that so um, it'll be a nice hilltop art addition for the city, and um, I think a really neat project. I think you'll enjoy it when it's done. And that's all I have. Did anyone have questions for me? Um, did we make an application for the most recent round of community crossings? We did not. I t think I told you originally that we were, were going to do that. Um, after working on that and considering um, I asked the mayor's permission to not apply in the spring. I'm going to wait and apply for the full amount in the fall. We have quite a number of projects in process right now. I want to make sure that the matching funds and all of the funds required for those other projects are safe and um, that you know a lot of those don't include professional fees and engineering fees. That's quite a bit more money. I just want to make sure that we're in good shape. We are, but uh, I, d I thought it was probably prudent to just wait. Uh, we also want to change the way we look at paving a little bit and have a bigger impact in, in particular neighborhoods. And sometimes, as Curtis knows, that, that includes a lot more work um, substructure with sewer lines, water lines, and all that. So it takes a little bit more time to coordinate. So I just felt like we could give it a better application if we do it all at once in the fall. The risk in that is if something happens to funding and it's not available, but fingers crossed we'll be okay. Yeah, and I would just add to that, which is um, we did receive grant proceeds in the second round in the fall. That work hasn't commenced yet, so we're going through that. We're also uh, preparing some work for um, a master sidewalk plan and, and drainage survey so we can figure out you know where we need to invest capital there but part of this also is making sure that we're preserving capital for to put it in the right places we have lots of infrastructure project go, projects going on uh, across the city that requires match money we also as you'll, you'll learn a little bit have uh, quite a bit of economic development activity that's split between the city of madison and our and our city of madison redevelopment commission and so we want to make sure we're using whatever capital from whichever source most effectively but well, roads are certainly important. Uh, we did a ton, as you'll hear from the street, uh, our street superintendent's report, we did a ton of paving uh, last year, and we'll also do that in the spring. So I think it's prudent to kind of press pause button a little bit. Anything else for me? All good. Thank you. Thank you. Next up would be Matt Worth is back. Good evening again, Council. Um, as you can see from my report, I've, I've mentioned earlier on our COVID-19 um, response grant, that, that money has already been distributed and is in the hands of those small businesses. So that's the good news as well. Um, and I've had more than one um, reach out to me and say, what a difference 
even a small amount of money has made to them over the last several months when it comes to paying rent or ordering um, PPE supplies and equipment. Just, you know, nobody budgeted for having to sanitize everything in their business as much as they've had to. And those things all cost money. So just different things like that um, really tells me we're on the right track with the program. Um, I didn't ask any questions on that specifically um, as it relates to the next round. So um, good news on our workforce front. Um, state rate dropped to 4.0. We're at 3.9 though in Jefferson County. So we are still continuing to trend in the right direction. Uh, month previous was 4.4, so we're down to 3.9. Um, starting to see some folks struggling to find employees, um, and, and there's a probably a variety of reasons for that, including the pandemic. But um, you know, there's a, there's a fine line between uh, unemployment insurance and going back to work, and we've just uh, everybody's trying to balance that, I think. So, um, but most of our companies have continued to be, be stable throughout this um, could be better certainly but a lot of them got real creative when it first hit and and that really carried them through they were able to pivot and and make a difference through ppe production or or shields or whatever and and really have weathered the storm pretty well um, it's not ideal yet by any means supply chain issues particularly from china continue to plague several of our local companies um, in terms of getting product they need on a timely basis to then promise to fulfill orders on a timely basis. It's just a domino effect. So that still needs to be worked out and, and fought through, so to speak. So, But the overall workforce employment picture is much better than it could be. So I think we're, we're holding our own. Um, as far as Indiana goes and the, the way we're ranking in Region 9 throughout our, our counties in that region. So, any questions on that? Um, you will hear, um, I don't want to steal the mayor's thunder, we've, been, we've had a productive couple of days on the grocery store front, so um, I'll, I'll let him elaborate on that a little bit more in his report later to you. Um, up on the hilltop, the shopping center, until the retail world really tries to come back and is able to come back, um, kind of on a kind of in a holding pattern up there um, at Michigan Clifty at the moment. Um, have reached out to the, the the folks that we've been dealing with throughout this. They are still interested in Madison, but as you can imagine, with retail the way it is right now, it is just a little bit too risky at the moment. So, um, but we continue to stay engaged with those folks. Those are the, the real real big things. That's the mayoral, as again, you'll hear from the mayor, there's a lot going on. But. I want to mention, too, that tomorrow we're hosting yes. Southern Indiana RDA. Yeah, they're, they're coming to Madison. Um, they, they, this is the five-county regional development authority that um, the state created several years ago. Jefferson County is a part of that, and uh, they asked if, if we could they could host that this time here at City Hall. It's been up at Hanover College before and over at the courthouse, but never here at City Hall. So... That's a real opportunity for us to showcase everything we've got going on and then kind of tell them how Madison fits in the, the bigger picture of the five county area. So that'll be tomorrow morning at uh, 10 o'clock, I believe, right here. It is open to the public, by the way. Thanks, Mayor. So, glad to try to answer any questions you may have on the, on the economic development front. Okay. Thank you, Matt. All right, thank you. Thanks, Council. Tony? Good evening, Council. Uh, each of you should have a uh, paper with a list of some of the things we've been doing at the street department. Um, I won't go through those, but if anyone has any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. You guys did a great job getting Main Street cleared off with the big round of snow we had. So. Thank you. Thanks Appreciate it. Tony's also helping us, the uh, street department's also helping us catch up on some some work at uh, Sunrise um, while we are, you know, uh, having some downtime for a couple of months, so I'm grateful there, too. Thank you. No, I think Katie had a question. I had a quick question for okay. you. Um, <laughs> as I traverse from uptown to downtown and throughout our community, I'm noticing more and more 
trash? Is is the city city focusing at all? The street department focusing on that, like on on Michigan Road at all? I have a guy doing it every day. Okay. Yeah, Main seems Street, Bond Drive, the alleys. So. It seems worse than it's ever been for some reason. I don't know. I know that's not you, but no, I have a guy usually every day picking up trash. Throughout the, just one guy for the whole city. Mm hmm Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Except for the trash trucks. Right. There's a whole crew for that. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, but today I was driving up Michigan Hill and uh, one of Tony's employees was literally out of his car walking up the hill picking up trash. It, it's, uh, it's, I would call it litter more than anything, right? And uh, it comes from a variety of, variety of sources, but uh, we could ask the community to not litter. That would be very helpful and keep our community clean and safe and beautiful. Mm, speaking of clean, safe, and beautiful, Chief Wallace. What a great segue. Yeah, I've never really been called beautiful, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Evening Council. Just an update on the uh, COVID issues. Uh, the PD is staying relatively healthy. We did have one officer uh, that uh, did test positive. However, that officer has overcame the uh, virus and is back with us. Um, we are running to several officers that are on quarantine due to the fact that their spouse has it. Uh, however, so far so good with them as well. So we're staying relatively healthy. Uh, the uh, shots have been made too long, available to law enforcement. Uh, quite a few in the department have received them. I just received my second one a week ago today and uh, with no issues. So, so hopefully uh, once we get that through the department, uh, that'll hopefully take uh, some of the burden and the, and the worries that we have uh, dealing with this virus off of us. Our probationary officer, uh, Nicole Midget, of course the academy was affected by the, uh, by the virus, so she is actually in week four virtually. Uh, we'll finish one more week here and then finally get to go to the academy and with hopes of graduation on April 8th. So we'll be glad to get her through and get her back. Uh, we have completed our hiring process and we've uh, extended a conditional offer of employment to Kayla Taylor Moore. Uh, she is currently working at the Jefferson County Jail and uh, serves our country in the National Guard. I think, uh, I think this council and I think our, our city will be very pleased with uh, Kayla. She uh, uh, was going to bring a lot to the department and, uh, and good for the girls. Yeah, we're, this, is, this is our third, third female officer and we're very excited to, uh, to have Kayla coming on board. Uh, the speed bump up in front of the uh, sports complex. Uh, right there, Nader and Block of Green Road is either it's in or will be in soon. Um, it is in. Thank you. Yeah, big thanks to the street department and uh, uh, Kenny. They went up and, and oversaw that. Uh, you know, right now, obviously, to be effective, but uh, but I think uh, more so in, in the uh, future when the summer months roll around and our sports complex uh, is in full swing. I know Council Lady Dottillo, she was uh, very. Uh, involved in, in, in overseeing this as well, so, so I thank her as well. I just want to finish by, I don't want to really go into a lot of details about investigations and, and ongoing uh, crimes that, uh, that we've been looking into, but we did have uh, one a week ago where a, uh, an actual explosive device blew up in, in a lady's face up on the Kennedy Drive. And with our four detectives and be able to put those resources on such an incident like that, in, in within a little over 48 hours, uh, resolving it and in, in, in filing additional criminal charges against an individual who's already in jail for, for something similar along these lines, it's just a, uh, it's just a huge asset to the department and to the community. So I just want to mention that uh, because I know this council and this administration has been very supportive of, of adding a few officers to the department and uh, expanding our investigative force. And uh, this is just a, a prime example of, of how things can develop and how quickly we can hopefully resolve things by just uh, simply having the right people in the right place and enough help. So I just want to thank you guys for uh, your continued support and uh, and I hope that uh, the community has seen the results by the uh, additional support you've given us. So thank you. Hi. I saw that mic come on. I'm not moving. I'm just curious. <laughs> so we are, you're not fully staffed yet to the maximum number of positions that you're wanting, is that correct? As soon as Kayla, yeah, is coming on board, um, you know, we will be fully staffed up to this point. But uh, 
We had budgeted one additional officer for 2021, and so they've gone through the recruiting process, yes. made an offer, and mm -hmm. uh, it's been accepted. So it has, yes. So essentially, we have to put them through uh, IPEP, which is a public employee uh, uh, function to make sure that the perf will accept them and those type of things. So um, it's a little bit of a process, but uh, but we're cruising right along. But uh, Again, the support that this council and this administration has given us really pays huge dividends when uh, you know things are going south on us and we need that additional help. So I just wanted to point that out and thank you guys. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. And the uh, last department report we'll receive tonight will be building and design by Martin. Good evening, Council. Um, you have my report, but um, if you don't mind, I would like to read through it quickly. Um, I think, you know, in the middle of uh, winter, still cold months, this is still a pretty impressive list of, of all the projects that are that are going on um, currently or starting as well. So, uh, North Madison Vet Clinic received their certificate of occupancy. The B Wright Service Center also received a certificate of occupancy. The Eagle Cotton Mill project um, is really just chugging along great. They're they're actually, my, my notes here are actually even a little bit behind. Um, they're already um, on the third floor, ready for a, a finished paint and a finished wall um, material. Uh, windows, as I think you guys are probably seeing on social media, are going on, they're mostly on the north end, and, uh, or north side, and they're also now being installed on the south side. The uh, Cruising Auto Financial Center, Unfortunately, is waiting for Duke Power, um, Duke Energy, to move the uh, power lines before they can continue on the construction of the second floor. Uh, the Channel Chevrolet Body Shop. Um, this has maybe been a couple weeks ago. They've already gotten their inspections for mechanical rough-ins, um, metals on the fi uh, metal finished ceiling is in, and um, they're already uh, insulated and working on the metal walls now. Um, the accessory building for the Enviroscape. Is same kind of same category. Mechanical rough fans installation is complete, and they're working on finishes. Uh, Bears Furniture Office and uh, Bathroom Remodel. Um, they've had their rough in um, inspections, and they're working on finishes. The River Tower Lofts. Um, they have been working on all completing all their finishes on the rest of the facility. Um, this says we were scheduling for a final inspection on the first of February, and actually got a call yesterday. Um, they want to meet tomorrow for a, a, a pre-final walkthrough um, and then hopefully have that uh, final inspection for their certificate of occupancy um, next week. They also received their uh, flood elevation certificate uh, completion. McRoberts Early Learning Center on Lanier Drive is um, starting the remodel. The uh, VSG building addition, very large um, addition uh, inside of their uh, existing facility, um, is underway. Um, they've been doing the first uh, footing inspections the past couple weeks. The All Kids Can Overpeck Properties received their certificate of occupancy for their new building on their facility. The Free to Lay Warehouse, uh, Nelson Industries, um, is under construction. I performed uh, the first footing inspections there. Um, also, have ongoing inspections for four new houses on the hilltop and continuing multiple rough in inspections downtown. And a building permit for the remodel of the Social Security office went out, and there's two more um, large commercial projects that um, are basically in plan review waiting for uh, permits to, uh, to be completed. Um, and also in our office, uh, we still have uh, Darian Vernon helping. Um, he's now part-time in our office. Um, we have a, uh, um, an interview scheduled tomorrow for someone for that administrative uh, position. Hopefully that works out well, but uh, still... Uh, Darian plans to be with us for a while, part time, and he's he's working out very very well. So that's all I have. It's a lot going on across the city. Good job, Ron. Yeah. Thanks. Next month, we'll or next meeting we'll, in two weeks, we'll have reports from Parks Director, Utilities, uh, Pace, and. Uh, uh, Chief DeVries and, and any other areas that were not covered tonight. So we're going to do that quarterly. Um, a written reports on a monthly basis, but hopefully you found this this evening helpful. Well, uh, I'd yes, like to thank them for coming tonight. I think it, it's a great opportunity for us to get to see them. I think it's also a great opportunity for the community to get to hear 
what's going on behind closed doors that maybe they're not privy to? We're not behind closed doors, we're out in the wide open. Okay, let me all over the that. city. That they may the not city. be aware, but this is a much better public forum for them to hear the information yes. about that, what's going on in the city. Brian will tell you he's putting lots of miles on his car. Thank you, Brian. Turn it back over to Joe. We have no bills on third reading. We have one bill on second reading, and that is ordinance number 2021-1, an ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana, establishing a three-way stop for traffic at the intersection of Broad Street and Highland Street. And as that's on second reading, it is now open for comment from council and or the public. And I might ask uh, Chief Wallace to maybe come up to the podium to address any questions there. He was really a uh, proponent for this as well as uh, uh, Councilman uh, Ditello and, and uh, Councilwoman Ditello and, and uh, Rampy. Yeah, absolutely, that was brought to my attention, concerns, complaints from the citizens uh, of speeding, you know, just generally through that area uh, and also affected the uh, Highland Drive as well. So uh, Council Lady Rampy and I actually met up there one morning and uh, kind of canvassed the neighborhood, spoke with several residents, uh, around that intersection and all were absolutely in favor of a, uh, a three-way stop. Um, Council Lady uh, Rampy uh, got a very close first-hand view of the, uh, some of the circumstances as a car came off Ross fairly fast and uh, she had to move back, I believe, if twice. I'm not mistaken. I mean, the car twice, twice, uh, waiting on and, two balls to get there. <laughs> I went, which I was right on time, but maybe, well, maybe a few minutes late. I was, I but, was early, just yeah. <laughs> But the big concern is, is coming off Ross, turning onto Highland uh, with a lot of speed, so um, hopefully the three-way stop will uh, will rectify that, and, and also that is a school district, so uh, the more we can slow and calm traffic down in that area, the better off we are. So never found anybody opposed to it, and, and I think it would be beneficial to the safety of, uh, of that area. Anything else from the council? I'd like to go ahead and assist on the rules and move on to third reading, or make a motion for it. Yes. Gotcha. I'll second. Okay. All in favor of moving this uh, bill on to third reading? Aye. 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 Okay. Was there anybody in the audience that had a comment on the stop sign? So for third reading, this is ordinance number 2021-1, an ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana, establishing a three-way stop for traffic at the intersection of Ross and Highland Street. And we'll have a roll call vote. Rampy? Yes. Lucy Dottillo? Yes. Kevin Off? Yes. Breach? Yes. Chatham? Yes. Van Dottillo? Yes. Bartlett? Yes. Thank you, Council. Moving on with the agenda in your submitted written reports is a report from Tree Board. A lot of activity going on with that volunteer board as well across uh, downtown. Now we'll move to one of my favorite parts of, the, of every meeting, which is our public comment town hall uh, portion. If anybody is here who would like to address the mayor's office or city council, please uh, come to the podium. We would love to hear from you. We did not receive any you know, communication via email uh, to share with, with council. Moving on to another favorite part of my of the agenda, which is the mayor's comments section, which I'm sure all of you all love to. Uh, I'll just mention that uh, we made several appointments this week, uh, and I reiterated, I think, in my last Friday wrap up how grateful I am for all the volunteers who serve on our 29 boards and committees, you know, without them uh, serving serving every single day, or, uh, the community, a lot of our work wouldn't be done. But our most recent appointments that I'll share with you now, uh, Mike Armstrong was app appointed to the Planning Commission. Daryl Henderson, who is president of our Planning Commission, appointed to the Board of Zoning Appeals. And Debbie Crawford is joining the Cable Advisory Board. Um, additional comments if my if those computer screens will turn on. Maybe 
want to give you an update on a couple of things as soon as these monitors uh, cycle open. While, while we're doing that, um, you know, a lot of work has been going on across the city from uh, economic development and infrastructure investment and planning perspective. Um, as you probably know, quite a bit of that work comes through the mayor's office either through city council and the city budget or a good chunk of it also occurs in the Redevelopment Commission. Uh, those are really where our two sources of uh, funding come for infrastructure and economic development activity. monitors come on. Earlier we had the proclamation for Black History Month and I wanted to share with you something that's exciting uh, that we're embarking on. Last, last week we had the Parks Board meeting and one of the things we've been working on for literally about a year was restructuring our Parks Department so that we could uh, capture better better information <coughs> about the operations of our parks system, but um, also make sure that we're judiciously using those funds and being able to make the right amount of investments. And what, what's been occurring, as I explained in the Parks Board meeting, uh, the reason behind the rate increases that we're looking at for several of the income producing uh, assets within the park system, and there are four. There are four revenue producing assets within the park system. One is uh, the campground, the other is Crystal Beach, Rutgers Sports Complex, and then Sunrise Golf Course. Last week, the Parks Board approved uh, our recommended rates for the 2021 season for, those, for three of those assets, which was the campground, Crystal Beach, and Sunrise Golf Course. And the importance of that is so that we can properly uh, make investment in our neighborhood parks. And I don't think there's anything more important. Let's get back in now. Really nothing more important than investing in our, in our neighborhood parks. Sorry, seems like internet connectivity here at City Hall is a little uh, hit or miss. We're going to uh, correct that. As soon as this loads, we'll get into the rest of this. Here we go. Here you're going to get a, a view of an area that we are going, we are dedicated to our neighborhood parks and we want to announce today that the first neighborhood park that is going to be the beneficiary of investment as we continue to restructure the parks department in order to generate proceeds to support all of our neighborhood parks will be Gaines Park. And I'm going to take you to Gaines Park. Uh, probably, if you've, if you've paid attention and driven through any of our neighborhood parks, you'll see, you'll see a park system that has largely been um, uninvested in for quite some time. And right here where my cursor is, this is an overview of Gaines Park. It's in a beautiful section of town, a very significant and historic part of town. And this is the former site of the Broadway High School that we talked about in the Black History Pro Proclamation. Uh, however, um, what you'll see too is that this park, along with many of our neighborhood parks, have not been modernized in quite some time. So our goal is to improve how we operate and manage our fee generating um, assets within the park system so that we can provide sufficient capital to modernize these important neighborhood parks. And I'm going to show you what this particular park looks like right now. And you'll get an idea of the fact that it is actually pretty nondescript, unappealing, 
not much curb appeal. And we want to change that. This is the potential, this has the potential for being a beautiful neighborhood park. So what we've done is we've, we've embarked on uh, concept um, visioning for our neighborhood parks. And we are going, we're committed to improving Gaines Park this year. And I'll show you what the concept for Gaines Park will now look like. You got an idea of what it looks like now, which is that. And what we're going to do is make it much more appealing using the same footprint, but make it more inviting for uh, the community to enjoy. This will have a combination of expanded shelter area, grilling, uh, new playground equipment, community gardens uh, in order to focus on community supported agriculture, and then new basketball court there on the west end of the, of the park. We'll also take the Broadway High School marker, uh, and that will be part of the uh, foundation uh, wall here for entry into the park so that we can recognize the historical significance that this park has offered to our community. These are concept drawings and renderings, but uh, our goal here is to get very, very close to using the footprint for this and make it a very appealing and attractive uh, part of that neighborhood with new playground equipment, like I say, expanded shelter house and basketball court. There's another, another uh, elevation, and then that right there really kind of gives you an idea of what the potential for this is. And you can take this footprint and this concept and apply it really to just about any of our neighborhood parks, whether it be Oak Hill or Lorenz or down on the riverfront, for example. We have a tremendous uh, and comprehensive list of park assets, uh, but we need to maintain them and we need to modernize and invest in them. And that's what we're doing through the Parks Department. Mayor, was there any consideration for a bathroom down there? Not there. No. Uh, that, did not, that didn't come into the concept. Uh, what we're going to do, Councilman, is we'll be uh, having public input sessions, uh, sessions to learn what the community wants from that area. Uh, right now, it's probably, I mean, it's not, a, it's not, I wouldn't say it's been very well used because it's been poorly maintained. Uh, but we do, we do know we need to put bathrooms in some of our community parks, and that investment will probably go to where we get the highest traffic. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll look into all of those things. So I mentioned we've been doing lots of things across the city. Uh, you're aware of the gateway improvement projects that we're, we've embarked on with the property acquisitions by the bridge. We've, we are in the process of acquiring property on the riverfront to expand our uh, open space and outdoor recreation area. We still have the shopping center property at the corner of Clifty and Michigan Road that Matt mentioned earlier uh, under contract. Uh, that has been delayed because of COVID and the impact on the uh, retail uh, market. Mindy outlined the sidewalk improvement project uh, uh, at 8th and Craigmont over to the junior and senior high. We're doing some things with regards to public art, lots of infrastructure investment. Uh, again, part of the conversation about managing our, our capital resources. And then as you're aware, we have a steering committee that's in place, uh, as well as a, a very, very large grant application, a federal highway grant application to the tune of about $5 million for Main Street. I'm gonna show you one other parcel here. Council, I'm happy to report today in the Redevelopment Commission, as you'll see here, this is one of the largest contiguous 
sites in a historic district in the United States. This is the ruler building. We have been in the planning stages to revitalize that area, which would be Mulberry, second over to West Street, all the way down to Vaughn from Main Street. Uh, I think that area is uh, uh, a very, very exciting area that is ripe for revitalization. And what we've learned through a lot of, a lot of strategy, and particularly with our PACE program, and I think it's just proven that where city capital is invested uh, and we partner with the community, it attracts additional private investment. Our PACE program, for example, is just one example where we have leveraged city dollars two and a half to one in order to revitalize targeted areas, eliminate, eliminate blight, and uh, re restore and preserve historic properties. So the Redevelopment Commission today approved um, entering into a purchase contract for the ruler property so that we can, um, we have, as you know, we uh, attracting a grocery store operator is a high priority for us. And we are going to, so I get over that property, there we go, acquire this property and market it to uh, independent grocery store operator. We've had a lot of momentum there uh, recently, and we feel that it is uh, advantageous for us to control this, this parcel, and, and also the fact that it has uh, offers so much for revitalizing this area. As you know, the Madison Area Arts Alliance is doing a large, um, um, there we go, mural project there. They're doing this large mural project on this south wall of the former bakery. We are redesigning this parking lot, and there's already investment being made in uh, revitalizing that Mulberry Street corridor. Give you an idea of what that parking lot can look like is this um, creating a destination development working with the Madison Area Arts Alliance and the Indiana Des Destination Development Corporation, but also applying our capital to infrastructure and parking here to make this area much more attractive. As you know, at the foot of, of West Street, we're already embarking on um, the planning and funding for the Overlook Project, where the current judges stand is now. And then on top of that, we have the what will be Here's a rendering of what our concept is for looking with the former ruler property. So I'm grateful for everybody's support, particularly Redevelopment Commission support today to go ahead and enter into a contract to acquire that property. And uh, Matt and I have been working on different levels of incentives um, and having meetings with grocery store operators, but having this property under control I think is, is key for us to be able to sell Madison uh, to a grocery store operator. We do have a um, market study that supports the retail environment for a grocery store operator. And we now have some visioning that's gone through with what this, this corridor can look like. And I think when we place our capital investment down there, additional investment will follow, not just those two corner lots that I mentioned, but that commercial property that is in that corridor too. Uh, all the way down to the riverfront. So uh, excited to report that development, which just happened this afternoon at the Redevelopment Commission meeting. And uh, and again, the hard work is getting, uh, it's not just uh, certainly getting getting sites under control, but it is going through this, this visioning process and then selling, selling uh, uh, the city to potential grocery store operators. That property has been vacant for three years. And I'm happy that uh, we're now taking a major step forward in um, you know, putting resources toward a, a key initiative of ours that we've already, we've been working on it for a year. And uh, Mayor Welch's administration worked on it for two years prior to that. So we're making a commitment here and 
uh, we'll be more to come and we'll keep you updated as we go. I know, I think, uh, Councilman Tilly, you had some questions on the status of the grocery store. That's, that's kind of an update, a, late, uh, a recent development. And uh, like I said, more, more information to come on that. We did look at multiple sites, and this literally is the one that made, made the most sense uh, for what, we, what operators have been telling us they would be looking for in order to uh, expand and invest in our community. I'll pause there and answer any questions anybody might have, either council or anyone from the audience. But I want to let you know that a lot, a lot has been going on, uh, and it's something we work on every single day. Hearing none, uh, next, next council meeting is Tuesday, February 16th. I have a motion to adjourn. To adjourn. Second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed. Thanks, everyone.